Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A woman caught in the crossfire, bullets flying near the Bear County Magistrate's office. Sheriff Javier Salazar saying an assistant chief was heading into work this morning when he heard several gunshots. As he kept driving, he found a woman in a white vehicle. BCSO thinks she got caught in the middle of a shootout where at least two people shot at each other. Deputies don't think the woman was the intended target. They tell us she's shaken up a bit, but she is okay. Although bullets did hit her car, one person was taken into custody at the scene. Deputies are looking for at least one other person who they believe was involved. Also, Bear County Sheriff's investigators have their work cut out for them trying to figure out what caused two trucks to violently crash. One driver killed, another is in the hospital with a head injury. It happened this morning in far northwest Bear County on Highway 16 near Highway 211. Katrina Weber at the scene, and she tells us it's not quite an open and shut case. This seems to be an investigation with a lot of moving pieces. The initial report said that the crash happened right in that intersection with 211. However, it seems that some of the details have changed. What hasn't changed is that one driver is dead. Sheriff's investigators say he was in the white pickup, now a mangled mess. His truck was traveling in one direction on Highway 16, just south of Highway 211. The dump truck was heading the other way. The initial report mentioned it was the dump truck driver who lost control and crashed into the pickup. However, investigators at the scene would not say who was at fault. They found that dump truck driver underneath his overturned rig, somehow still alive but with a head injury. The report says he was alert when he was rushed to a hospital. So far, investigators have not released any names of either driver, and they say it's too early to determine if the surviving driver of that dump truck will face any charges. Reporting from far northwest Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, a few showers last night, some drizzle and some rain and some wrecks all morning long out there on the highways. Yes, this is I-37 at Hot Wells. There's an accident here that's blocking off two or three lanes of traffic. It looks like one, two, three, maybe four cars involved, emergency vehicles on the scene, and all the traffic is having to scoot around to that far left lane. Again, this is I-37 at Hot Wells. Yeah, roads are slick, and this drizzle has been really persistent this morning. Uh, continues. In fact, we've picked up four hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport. It's all been really light, but it does cause those roads to get really slick. Uh, the best way we can look at drizzle is not really with radar because radar doesn't see it so well, but it is with the visibility and these numbers are starting to come up. So it's looking better and better. Uh, we're up to a mile and a half at the airport. Just a little while ago, it was well below a mile visibility. Randolph and Stinson and Port SA also starting to see these numbers come up. So I think we're going to get some improvement here. And I do think we'll see a little bit of sun this afternoon, but it has been rather damp this morning. The drizzle kicked in right at about 9 a.m. You can see it there. Clouds lowering. We saw some fog and uh, drizzle and even some light rain in some cases and still fairly cloudy out there with uh, some drizzle being reported. 85 at 3 o'clock. I do think, again, we'll see some breaks in the clouds by the afternoon. We're up to 86. It's warm. It's humid. No significant rain chances today other than the drizzle we're seeing this morning. 80 at 8 o'clock, 79 at 9 p.m., and then down into the 70s tonight as clouds build back into the area. Here are some of the weather headlines. As we head towards Fiesta, a few storms we think on Thursday. We'll have to keep an eye on those. Plus, some better chances of rain by Saturday with a cold front that could actually cool us down in a significant way by Sunday. We're going to talk all about this and look at our rain chances through the weekend and into next week coming up. All right, Justin, look forward to that. Thank you. New at noon, a man accused of beating another man to death in 2022 will spend the next three decades behind bars. Yesterday, Jeremy Behai was sentenced to 30 years in prison as part of a plea deal. He's accused of beating Michael Aiden until he was unconscious and Aiden reportedly suffered a head injury that later led to his death. The issue of autism and its role in a child starvation case on trial at the Bear County Justice Center. Benjamin Severo was only 28 pounds at four years old when he died. His stepmother, Miranda Casares, could face life in prison for his death. This morning, a psychologist took the stand testifying that autism could have played a factor in the boy's condition, but also said that autism does not cause children to die. However, the judge ruled that the psychologist was not allowed to diagnose the boy with autism because she never actually treated him or performed the testing that's required. 
The defense has added three more witnesses to call up and closing arguments could take place tomorrow morning. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus updating City Council's Public Safety Committee on the progress of his plan to reduce crime in our city. About a year ago, SAPD partnered with a UTSA criminology and criminal justice professor to form a violence crime prevention plan. Part of the strategy was to implement a hot spot policing, which boils down to placing officers in areas with high crimes with their emergency lights flashing for about 15 minutes. We have a crew at the city council meeting and we'll bring you the rest of the new information we find out on our later newscast. USAA laying off more people. The San Antonio based company letting 220 more people go. The company says it had to make cuts due to quote, changing business needs, end quote. However, it will continue to hire people for other positions, they say. It's unclear how the layoffs affected local USAA offices. Last year, USAA eliminated almost 1,000 jobs. In May, 300 jobs were cut. And for the first time in its 100-year history, USAA posted losses on its annual balance sheet last year. She used to, like, play by herself, um, but now she is like wanting to engage in others and interact with others. Just one of the ways the nonprofit Any Baby Can has made an impact on children's lives through their programs. The organization helps families navigate autism, and today we will be diving into this topic. Tiffany Huertas has been telling inspiring stories about autism for Autism Awareness Month, and she is hosting a town hall a little bit later today. Tiffany here with us to preview some of these topics that a lot of people don't know much about. Yeah, it's been an, an exciting month. So many interesting stories, but these stories are are going to last a lifetime because we're going to dive deep into them today. So we will be talking with expert panelists about not only understanding autism, but looking at how organizations are working together to support families. Now, one of those organizations is Any Baby Can that offers a broad range of services from case managers who help link families to local and state programs to autism services. We spoke with the Flores family, who say the nonprofit helped them navigate autism and their guidance changed their daughter's life forever. They gave us classes to attend, I mean, from like ABA, like what is ABA therapy, like applied behavioral analysis therapy, um, to potty training strategies. And they welcome you with your arms open. The Flores family will be joining the 20th annual Walk for Autism this weekend. It takes place at Palo Alto College starting at 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. There will be resources from a variety of organizations, businesses, and service providers. And I am honored and excited to emcee that event. And today, we will continue this conversation, and we hope you join us for the town hall at 2 p.m. through the KSET Plus streaming services. And it's just been an honor meeting all these families and learning so much about these programs. Mm -hmm. So if people have questions, send them in right before the town hall so I can kind of maybe look through them and then be able to ask them at the town hall. It, you know, a lot of people that uh, d know about kids that have autism, but a lot of people don't, and they don't realize that what they're looking at is not just bad behavior. This is something that is diagnosed, it's a medical condition, and it is something that everyone needs to be aware of. Yeah, early intervention is key when dealing with autism, and we're gonna dive deep into that issue, but also there is sometimes a delay in diagnosis. Yes. And we're gonna to continue to look into that as well. Yes, this is one years of those, waiting to get a, an appointment even. Yeah, this is one of those uh, situations where information is a key. People need to be informed on what to look for and, and how to act when they, when they find out. Yeah, and so, the organizations here yeah. in town are doing so much, and I'm excited to share. This will be good. Town Hall, two o'clock this afternoon. Meantime, we're also gearing up for Fiesta season. It comes with a lot of familiar sights, sounds, and foods, but you will notice some differences this year, and we have the five changes you need to be aware of. Still ahead. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. How many official Fiesta kings and queens are there? A, nine, B, 12, or C, 20? The answer after the break. So how many official Fiesta Kings and Queens are there? The answer is A, nine. 
while y'all are talking about her and her dream and how uh, it all came true, guess what? You're gonna plank? You're I want y'all to talk that. while I plank, and I'm gonna see if I can plank as long as it takes y'all to talk about her, okay? Oh, so okay. y'all go ahead, Her go. Okay, you're up first. Okay. But don't read right, slow. So Donna Jean needed to plank for three hours for the record. She reached that goal and then kept going. Of all 12 <laughs> of her grandchildren at a school in Alberta, Canada. <laughs> it is a combined elementary, junior high, and high school. I'm already you, impressed with your time. Is that what it? Year? I, I, Are we done? Because that was about a minute. <laughs> That's probably more than I could do. You did really well. <laughs> That's tough on this. David, this yeah. though, right? David, I'm so glad you did it. I thought you were going to ask Four hours us. that we'll yeah. be playing. There's no way. All right. And I guess you'll be calling in sick tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't pull anything. Yeah. All right. So then we went to commercial, and guess who decided to plank? Uh-oh. Stephanie Cerna. Oh. Dear. In that skirt and her high heels. Watch this. <laughs> Go, G.I. Jane. <laughs> Look at you. In a skirt, nonetheless. But I can't beat David. You know, she, she you. has good that's, form that's, there. Yeah. Yours is a, a skirt and well, four heels. You know, she runs yeah. marathons. Yeah. You know, She's in pretty good shape. But you know, the, the, in case you didn't catch it, there was a, a retired teacher from Canada who planked for yeah. four hours and 30 minutes. Broke a record, right? So she could get in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. It's just Guinness record. So that's. Just, so we were just doing the story and thought we'd try it. I'm not going to try it. So. Well. That, yeah. Knock yourself You down. could try it, and you'd have to beat 57 seconds. <laughs> That's how long it lasted. All right. <laughs> Justin is not going to plank either because he is far too tall, and True. that would require superhuman strength. Uh, still watching this accident. Again, roads are slick out there. Be careful. Yeah, it looks like they're, they're getting that cleared up. There has been a lot of slick spots in the roads, as Ursula pointed out. Uh, we have another crash, uh, 410 and Jackson Keller as well. So just be careful out there. I think things are starting to dry up a little bit. The aquifer is down 7 tenths of a foot, 638.1. And in your pollen count, molds moderate, 540. Look at oak. It's in the low category. I think we're, we've made it through oak season, and that should continue to go down. Pecan and grass are also there. Rain chances. We do have some in our future. We'll talk about when and where coming up. We are just, what, two days away from the start of Fiesta? Because Thursday night's Fiesta, it's Fiesta. It's up on us fast. Yeah. So we know the question, I bet you the question of the day is going to have something to do with Fiesta. <gasps> no. Oh. Oh. Well, it's also Selena Day today. <laughs> oh, that's right. Right? Yes. We celebrate her yep. birthday yeah. today. Would have been 53 years yes. old today. Yes. And so the question is, your favorite Selena song? Como la flor for me. Okay. I know yours. Bitty bitty ba ba. And that's, yeah. that's just synonymous, I think. So yeah. What about you guys? Yeah. Well, that's the one. Yeah. That's the that's one that's everybody one. knows. Yeah. 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 It's a good uh, one. Was, was so, that her first crossover crossover hit? Or was that was that no. the crossover hit? That was not her first crossover. No, um, I, know she's, I will like let me say fall in love with you. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. The ballad, yes. yeah. The ballad was her yes. first crossover. Yeah, but that's hit. a good one. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the one that she's best known for. I would say. So scan that QR code and let us know. And if you have any you know, thoughts, memories about that as well. Now, as far as Fiesta goes, Fiona is out at a metal giveaway. We are going to be talking yeah. to her about that as well. Yeah, two days away from uh, Fiesta Fiesta, yep. and it's we have week. got. Can't see it right now. About a dozen or more wrestlers here today. I might be going down. Yeah. yeah. What he might can be go going wrong down. with that? <laughs> Stick around, find out. You're gonna hear all about it. Wrestlers. Got yeah. some wrestling going yep. on Better. down there. Yep. Say, nah, I got some wrestling. Lot and we got food too, of course. Lot you know, yeah. So. He's in cues, right? Got some okay. wrestling. <laughs> all right. So we are also. Um, Keeping an eye on the weather. If Fiesta is starting up, Fiesta Fiesta is an outdoor event on Thursday. Yes. I will be there with Steve Spreister. Right. To mm -hmm. open up all the festivities. And Justin, you're just not my buddy right now. Listen, uh, th there's <laughs> chances for rain, but there's always an opportunity to fit these in events in and around our rainfall. Okay, so and everybody wins here. Do That's... you remember last Fiesta Fiesta? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's tough this time of year. We do have storms in the forecast, yes, but it's a small chance. And then as we get towards the weekend, small those chance. chances go up. Small chance. Small chance. Yeah. See? I remember that small chance Be from positive, last year. Be positive, Ursula. It's Everything's <laughs> fine. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. good. Let's go outside for you. Oh, got yeah. <laughs> that, that picture does not help your argument. Oh, uh, well, the clouds are lifting. We have some low-hanging clouds at the moment, but they're starting to lift. It, things are drying out just a little bit. It was damp there, though, for a couple of hours. Uh, some good drizzle. 
uh, all around San Antonio. And uh, right now we're still looking at cloudy skies. 72 at the airport, 76 New Braunfels, 79 in Seguin, and uh, 70 right now in Bernie. Humidity levels, as you might imagine, are very high here uh, across the board. Now, I told you drizzle is kind of hard to detect on radar. You don't always see it. Uh, so we look at the visibility to kind of really tell us where we're dealing with issues. And uh, the airport has the lowest visibility at the moment, 1.5. But these numbers are all coming up. So that tells me that these ceilings are trying to lift a little bit and the drizzle is indeed letting up. So our forecast today will go uh, 86 at 4 p.m., 86 at 5 p.m., 82 at 7 p.m., and then back down into the 70s tonight with lots of clouds. And then we'll start off cloudy and humid again tomorrow. Here's the satellite picture. And We've got pretty thick clouds right over Bear County and stretching up and down I-35. Uh, those clouds often like to bank up against the escarpment. We're seeing that today. There is some clearing, though, too. There's a frontal boundary or a boundary uh, between some very humid air and very dry air to the north and west. It's trying to work in our direction. Don't know that it's going to have a lot of success, but it is bringing clearing skies to places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg and Lakey and Rock Springs. Uh, I do think eventually these clouds that are over San Antonio will break up some. But in general, uh, will be a mostly cloudy day. And these clouds, by the way, uh, part of a, a system that is all the way up here across parts of Minnesota now. You see the spin right there? There's the low. There's going to be a good amount of severe weather today from Missouri up to parts of Illinois and Iowa. And then this tails all the way back down into Texas. Now, where we are, there's not a lot of upper level support, but we do have that boundary around, and that kind of helped to squeeze out some of that moisture this morning. And uh, that eventually moves away. It doesn't do a whole lot for us. And we see this front lift back to the north as a warm front. Uh, then as we get into tomorrow, some energy trying to come in from Mexico. There could be a couple of showers or storms along the Rio Grande, but I'm not looking for much on, on Wednesday. Thursday, though, we get a dry line setting up, which usually doesn't do a great job in generating storms, but it can. And so there is the threat for a few isolated storms Thursday afternoon, which I know Fiesta gets started on Thursday. And if we do see a couple of storms, they could be strong. So it bears some watching, but we're not going to get too disheartened with our Fiesta plans just yet. And then on Friday, frontal battery moves a little bit closer. That brings some rain chances with it. But our best odds probably on Saturday as this front slowly seeps into the area and probably more so Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening and Saturday night, where we could see some pockets of heavy rain with this front. Uh, right now, we have our highest rain chances on uh, Saturday night. So the Fiesta forecast looks like this. 80s on Thursday as Fiesta, Fiesta gets started. 30% chance of rain. On Friday, we've got Oyster Bank taste in New Orleans. 30% chance of rain. Saturday, a lot of Fiesta events. Rain chances at 60%, yes, but that's basically late in the day. And the good news here is that front comes through and clears us out on Sunday and Monday. The River Parade looks great. Uh, temperatures in the mid 70s, uh, possibly some dry air could even be a little bit cool once the parade gets started. Uh, so looking good for the second half of the weekend. Uh, but until then, there are some rain chances, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. All right, I got one word for you. Here, so. Umbrella. Umbrella. Go you also have, you have a really big Fiesta hat back there that I know That's you're going to be true. wearing. So. My, my head will be protected. Huge. Hey, folks all over the city getting ready for Fiesta like we are. But there are some changes at some of the biggest events. The five differences that you're going to notice during Fiesta this year coming up. Every year, the sights and sounds of Fiesta fill the air of San Antonio. And although we know pretty much what to expect from the party with a purpose, there are some changes this year. Here are five big ones, so let's run through them for you. First, Las Madre Alegre is back. Music festival that was popular way back here in San Antonio in the 1980s and 90s. Some of us will remember that. So this year, it's going to relaunch at Hemisphere. Two-day festival takes place next week, Thursday and Friday. Tickets still available. They start at just $15. Okay, and there's new food and drink options that are at Nyosa. They include funnel cake fries. Mm. <laughs> there's also going to be more beer options, and they're going to have something called iced Irish coffee. Nice. King William Fair, I'm using paper tickets again, getting rid of the blast pass system. It comes after people had trouble last year and couldn't load money onto their accounts. Admission 20 bucks at the gate, but the price drops to $15 if you get tickets in advance. 
and that the Battle of Flowers Parade, it's all going to get started a little bit later this year. The 2024 parade will take place at 1030. That's when they're going to leave the gate on Friday, April 26th. Battle of Flowers Parade, the nation's second oldest parade and the only parade in the United States produced entirely by women. And all of them are volunteers. This year's theme is Viva Amor. 2024. And of course, Fiesta Fiesta kicks it all off and it has a new home this year. That's right. The free event's going to be held at HEB Plaza at the Alamo Dome. It's from 4 to 11 o'clock this Thursday, 11 p.m. that is. You can find all of this information though on the uh, Fiesta section of our website. KSAT.com is your Fiesta headquarters. Every single thing you need to know about Fiesta those 10 days can be found right here. And while you're on our website, be sure to grab your tickets to our KSAT Insider Watch parties for both Battle of Flowers and Flambeau. All you have to do is register to be a KSAT Insider and then buy your tickets, scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen right there for more details. And it's not just the major events that make this time of year so much fun and so uniquely San Antonio. It's also the Fiesta fashion and the decorations. Uh, you know it. Right now, local Fiesta stores are busy with customers grabbing last-minute items, including flower crowns and cascaronas. KSET photojournalist Ken Huizar swung by a malls and the Fiesta at North Star Mall to talk with customers as they get ready for Fiesta. We sell Fiesta throughout the whole year. Right before, a week before Fiesta, everybody, you know, the the last, uh, the last of the um, of the party goers are trying to find their items. So yeah, we get quite a crowd before Fiesta. Yeah. What are you looking for in this store, Fiesta store? Um, well, the crowns because I don't have mine anymore, and then I want a blouse, and they have those Lotaria shirts. I think they're really fun, so I try to get a new one every year. Fiesta is is, is always we look forward to Fiesta every single year. Where's that? It's just it's part of our culture and you know it just it gives it's I call it the Mexican Mardi Gras. We sell probably more than anything Papel Picaba banners. Uh, we've got about 40, 50, 60 different styles. Everybody hangs them up at their office or their their front yard. I mean they're all over the, the city when Fiesta season rolls around this time of year. No chunkless? Nah, no, no chunklitos today. Nah, not those. I think they're made with Goodyear bottoms right here, but nah, yeah, no chunkless today. Viva, Viva Fiesta! Man, they got a wide variety of stuff for they, Fiesta, have you, don't they? I went there last week, in fact, yeah. to buy some stuff for the Fiesta Kings Cup polo match. They have everything. I mean, it is just chock-a-block full. That's nice, but no chunkless. No. Well, chock a block full. I like, that's pretty full. You get chock a block full, you're full. All right. Filling up your gas tank here right now. Prices are steep. The cost is only expected to increase with summer travel. We're talking with Consumer Reports to find out what is behind the current steady hike in gas prices lately. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Live cam. You know what? I hate that it's coming this week towards Fiesta, but boy, we need some rain, something fierce. Maybe we can just dodge it. Well, the bad thing, we'll though, about this stuff is, is this isn't really going to make a dent. Oh, this is kind of drought. a tease. Right no, here. this is not. We only picked up 400 of an inch. And this is always a difficult time of year because uh, we get people that email us that are like, hey, we want good weather for Fiesta to make that happen. And then there are the folks that, well, we love Fiesta, but <laughs> we need rain. Uh, so we try to fit every, you know, we don't have any control, obviously, but hopefully it all fits in. Uh, we get some rain. We get our Fiesta events in. In a perfect world, that's how it would work out. Uh, I can tell you that today we've had some light showers, uh, light drizzly stuff that has come through. But just within the last 10 to 15 minutes, we're noticing now some showers and developing uh, up here across parts of Kindle County and the Blanco County along that boundary I was talking about. Now, this isn't going to amount to much either, and I don't expect a lot out of this, but uh, yeah, a couple showers starting to show up on radar. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, there will be a few breaks here and there this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, staying cloudy for the time being. 86 today for a high, 80 at 8 o'clock. Down into the 70s tonight. Know that it will stay humid all day long, even going into uh, tonight. And I mentioned that boundary. Uh, we can call it a front. It's more like a dry line. And what that does is it separates the dry air out in West Texas. These, these dew points are in the 20s and uh, even teens. That's very, very dry air. 
separates it from the very humid air, which is what we are in. Dew points in the 70s here in San Antonio, which is muggy. Uh, and this boundary is going to hit the brakes, so we're not going to get any dry air in here, at least not yet. We do get a front that finally does push some dry air in here, but that holds off until the weekend. And when it does, bring some rain with it. So we're going to talk more about that. Uh, and again, another close look at that weekend forecast is coming up. All right, Justin, look forward to that. Thank you. Childhood emergency room visits on the rise due to kids accidentally taking melatonin. Makers of melatonin supplements are now being asked to tighten their standards. The Council for Responsible Nutrition is giving those supplement producers 18 to 24 months to voluntarily add some packaging that will deter children and also improve the warning language on their labels. Those changes for over-the-counter products. Melatonin regulates the body's natural sleep-wake cycle, but as a dietary supplement, it's not federally regulated. The trade group says an April 20 to 23 study found 25 products labeled as melatonin gummies contain dangerous levels of hormone. Efforts to stem the dangerous and growing trend of deep fake pornography on Instagram and Facebook is now under review. In particular, the Meta Oversight Board is reviewing how it addressed explicit AI-generated nudes of two female public figures from different countries. This comes amid growing concerns that artificial intelligence is fueling a rise in this form of harassment. Measures are in place to address the content, but there's questions as to whether it's enough and whether they are consistently enforced. Meta is also asking for your thoughts about its response to deep fake pornography. Comments can be submitted anonymously through April 30th. The Justice Department is planning to file an antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Live Nation is the parent company of Ticketmaster. They faced issues in the past over its dominance in ticketing industry. Critics suggest it's only able to raise ticket prices because of a lack of competition. But Live Nation claims prices are determined by the artists, teams, and venues, as well as supply and demand. Lawmakers started raising questions about the company's practices since the pre-sale meltdown of Taylor Swift's tour back in 2022. It's the second day of jury selection in the historical criminal hush money trial of Donald Trump. The former president back in court today after dozens would-be jurors were dismissed yesterday. Trump facing 34 felony counts of falsifying business records related to a hush money payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels to keep their alleged affair secret from voters before the 2016 election. He's pleaded not guilty and has said prosecutors are politically motivated. He also denies the affair with Daniels. The judge set aside nearly two weeks for jury selection. And once the jury is seated, the trial could take more than six weeks. U.S. intelligence reports suggest that Israel will not react to the weekend attack by Iranian forces with a large-scale response. They say Israel is weighing a narrow and limited strike on Iran instead. Over the weekend, Israel withstood an unprecedented air assault with more than 300 projectiles fired at its territories. It marked the first direct military confrontation between the Islamic Republic and the Jewish state. Israel has not given the U.S. an official warning about what their plans for retaliation may be or even when they might occur. A group of timber companies suing Pacific Gas and Electric for roughly $225 million. It's in connection with that devastating California wildfire back in 2021. That's when that Dixie fire raged for more than three months after it was sparked by a utility power line. It burned nearly a million acres and was the second largest fire in California history. The complaint filed last week accuses PG&E of failing to properly manage forced and electrical equipment to prevent the blaze. The timber company says they suffered massive financial losses. As a result, in January, California regulators fined PG&E $45 million for its role in that fire. The Brahma suffered two losses on Sunday. We'll explain in sports. It seems our South Central Texas town is getting noticed these days by more and more big names and stars. Who's now going to make an appearance here in San Antonio this year? A San Antonio nonprofit in need of a thousand volunteers to help place miniature flags at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. The president of Flags for Fallen Vets tells us they have around 2,000 volunteers so far, but need more to put out an estimated 140,000 flags at that cemetery.
If you'd like to volunteer, just email flag for fallen vets at yahoo.com. Make sure your email includes Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, your name, how many people will be helping you, and the flag placement will take place on May 29th, rather, I'm sorry, May 26th at 9 a.m. San Antonio continues to make a name for itself among music lovers. Another big star is headed our way. Shakira just Ooh. announced her highly anticipated world tour is coming to San Antonio. The Latin pop star will perform at the Frost Bank Center on Saturday, November 16th. This is Shakira's first world tour since 2019, and it comes on the heels of her newest album. Tickets on sale to the general public at 10 a.m. on Monday, April 22nd. That's next Monday. So that's a good time to get up and get your ticket if you want to see Shakira. However, some pre-sales start tomorrow. And San Antonio isn't the only Texas city on that tour. You can find more information, including links to buy your tickets at kset.com. And in case you missed it, more stars added to the lineup for San Antonio's superhero Comic-Con. Diego Luna, a veteran actor under the Star Wars umbrella and shows like Narcos Mexico will visit the Alamo City June 21st through the 22nd during the event this year. Luna joins others, including Marvel star Jeremy Renner and Ernie Hudson, who played Winston Zeddemore in the Ghostbusters franchise. Who are you going to call? Justin Horn. That's who I'm going to call. <laughs> what in the oh. world is that? Oof. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that that doesn't look so nice, right? Live cam as we look out towards the airport. Uh, looks like we got another round of dri drizzle. Oh, this is I-10 and 14. We got another round of drizzle coming through. Now, this camera's up pretty high, so it always looks a little bit worse than it is. But, uh, yes, it has been rather damp this morning. 72 so far today after a morning low of 72. Uh, basically, I think we got up to like 73 briefly, but we dropped back down again. So the temperature hasn't moved because of all the cloud cover and drizzle. It does get a little bit warmer though this afternoon once we see a little bit of sun. More on that forecast and those rain chances coming up. All right. Ooh. We got a Fiesta medal giveaway coming up and uh Actually, you know who's going to be there? This is why he said we'll probably see some sun this afternoon. Your Weather now Authority Fiesta Medal. Now That's today. Adam Kasky is going to be out and about. Yeah. Uh, Aren't you going? No, it's, uh, it's Mike and myself. You and Mike. Oh, yeah. you and Mike. That's why, that's why he was talking about how it's going to be nice and sunny this afternoon, because he's going out to give oh, away medals. Oh, you, yeah, you, know. you pick the weather, you pick the date. Yeah, okay, I, I get that. it. I get it. I see how that works. Four o'clock this afternoon at Pickup Fitness, that's off of Loop 410 near Ingram Road. It's all right there for you. And Justin Horn is going to be there. It's going to, going to be nice this afternoon. You, you know, the last medal giveaway they did uh -huh. uh, yesterday, they had to, like, turn people away. Ooh. They had mm -hmm. they had so many people. So which one, you, which one are you giving away today? It's the uh, KSAT weather. The KSAT weather. Yes. Okay. And I all hear right. there's some basketball at this location. So oh, man. I have to throw some hoops in there, too. So you can challenge people. You want a medal, you got to beat me at horse. Are you going to be live at 5 with this? We are. All right. Yeah. I, I want to see some of those hoops. Yes. Uh, I'll try to get Mike out there on the basketball court, too. That'll be, that'll be fun. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it is kind of uh, dreary right now. We've had clouds and drizzle and uh, even some light rain this morning. I, I want to show you Authority Radar one more time because there is just a little bit of activity trying to take shape along a boundary. Uh, this is really light. You're not uh, going to notice this too much, but there are some showers here right around the Bernie area, uh, stretching up into parts of Blanco County. A few showers. And these are trying to work in our direction towards San Antonio. But again, I, I don't think there's just going to be a, t a ton of rain out of this. We are uh, watching this boundary, though, closely. And you can see it very nicely on the uh, visible satellite picture right there. Those are those showers that are uh, developing there right out ahead of this, uh, this front. Uh, there is some clearing going on, too. We'll see if we eventually get some clearing here in San Antonio. I think that we will, but it's going to take a little more time for that to happen. Fredericksburg is seeing some sun, though. Rock Springs in the sun. Kerrville seeing some breaks. Still Rio, sunny there. Look at the difference that makes. It is 87 right now in Del Rio, 88 in Junction. Compare that to 72 here in San Antonio because we've been socked in with clouds and drizzle. In fact, the coolest spot on the map at the showers right here in San Antonio. 71 to 72, maybe 73 here on town where those clouds have been so thick. 
and uh, it has been very, very humid as well. 86 this afternoon. We're still shooting for mid 80s, uh, but it will take the clouds breaking up and that would need to happen here pretty soon. I, again, I think that we will. Uh, it's just at the moment it is still overcast. 82, 7 o'clock, 80 at 8 p.m., 79 at 9 p.m., and then down into the low 70s by tomorrow morning, but still very humid. Uh, there's the scene outside. It looks like drizzle is trying to develop yet again. 72 degrees there. East Julie winds at 3. And here is the setup. Uh, there is that boundary. I mean, you can see it so very clearly here. We can call it a front, we can call it a dry line, whatever you want to call it, but it divides some very humid air south and east Texas to uh, very dry air on west Texas. So the, the difference between these dew points, pretty impressive. San Angelo's in the dry desert air. We're in that warm, humid Gulf air here in San Antonio. And it's right along that boundary where we are starting to see a few showers. And you can really pick out where that front is uh, with this comma shaped area of low pressure across the northern plains where there's severe weather but we're on the tail end of things so we're just not going to get much out of this eventually that system moves east takes any sort of rain with it uh, then as we get into tomorrow a couple of storms along the rio grande and by thursday with a dry line we can see a few more isolated storms some of those could possibly be strong but it's isolated that's the first day of fiesta by the way and then a front starts to drop south. That brings some more rain chances by Friday and even better rain chances by Saturday. All this to say we're getting into more of an active pattern and there are going to be some opportunities from rain, for rain going forward, uh, especially Saturday night. That's when we have our highest rain chances. Uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, and Saturday night, we're going to put in a 60% chance of rain. So that's a good thing. Uh, 88 Wednesday, 90 on Thursday, 88 Friday. Uh, 82 on Saturday, cools down with the chances of rain, and then a front comes through. And look at the high on Sunday, 70, with a morning low of 59, and mid-50s Monday morning. So there is some improving weather after that front comes through. Guys. All right, keeping an eye on that one, for Maybe sure. Look that River Parade forecast. I like mm -hmm. that, huh? You've lucked Monday out. Ooh. Hey, the Brahmas lose their starting quarterback. We'll talk about that when we come back, and the Texans ready to take on expectations this year. Hey, San Antonio Brahmas lost the game Sunday, and as it turned out, they also lost their starting quarterback. They tell us Chase Garbers has been placed on injured reserve. Didn't specify the reason, but Athlon Sports is saying that Garbers suffered a wrist injury right there. Happened on that play in the third quarter. Garbers was running out of bounds, took a late hit from a Battlehawk defender, and that hit puts Garbers out for the season. Bernie quarterback Quentin Dormady. Dormady is listed as QB2, so we'll see if he gets the start. NFL teams who have had their head coach from last year stick around for this year have started off-season workouts. That means Houston Texans and D'Amico Ryans. The Texans spent $178 million this off-season bringing in new talent like Stephon Diggs and Joe Mixon. Ryans led the Texans to their 10-7 regular season record last year. AFC South title, they won a playoff game. That great season puts a lot of expectations on this season expectations on the outside whatever that may be it really doesn't change who we are right it doesn't the expectations from the outside don't permeate inside our building and now we have to change what we're doing just because of outside expectations we don't care about expectations talk doesn't win games we have to go out and play good football when that time comes now we still expect a lot out of them though <laughs> always we expect a lot out of Jen and Mike, too. Always. Yes, we try. We try to get we, Yes, we, we try to live up to your standards. <laughs> we yes. do, too. So, okay. hey, I'll tell you one thing that uh, people are excited about. Yes, the medals. Oh, yes. And our giveaway starts today. That's where Fiona is at. Fiona, how's it going out there? I tell you, that is right. It is day one of our Fiesta Metal giveaway, our SA Live Fiesta Metal giveaway. This crowd is already lined up. We are going to reveal to you where we are. So you're going to want to stick around because we're going to start handing medals out at 2 o'clock, right? 2 o'clock. 
Ooh, can you tell and that? Wow. BS is all about food, and who better to talk about that than Chef Brian West here. <laughs> Tasting Republic, how yes, are you? I'm wonderful. All right, six different regions of food in the state? Yeah, so I wrote a little manifesto on the cuisine of Texas, and I divided Texas, such a big state, into six little smaller food regions that have ex different expertise, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the basis for the entire event. All right, we are going to be talking about that, and a salad dressing made with gin. Gin. Wow. That's kind of I'm unusual. I'm intrigued. Yes. All right. It's Look, also, something fun this weekend. Yeah, I think it's a wrestling packed weekend. She's just like, oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, 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 yeah. I did not support this. Okay. okay. Wow. Here we go. You be signed up to, to oh. go to that event as well. Speaking of events, last week, Mona Alegre returns. We're talking 30 years. I have Carlito Miranda joining me with Grupo Metal. All right, this is a full circle moment for you, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, to be a part of Semana Alegre it was 30 years ago uh, that I first got to see Selena. Wow. And uh, I'll never forget that it wasn't too long after that. Jen, help! Jen! 